As we say in England, things are looking a little bit naughty in the Gulf at the moment. And considering that it is probably the most important shipping route on the planet, through which most of the world's oil flows, that should concern, well, just about everyone. Now, tensions in the Gulf are hardly new, but now a fresh player is involved. At about 11.40pm local time on Friday night, an Israeli-owned ship, the MV Helios Ray, was sailing through the Gulf of Oman when it suffered at least one, probably several, explosions. The car carrier, which had been sailing between Saudi Arabia and Singapore, was able to make dock in Dubai for assessment and repairs. And fortunately, none of the crew were injured. According to US defence officials, the ship suffered two holes each in both its port and starboard sides. Pictures that are alleged to show the damage caused make it unclear as to whether the ship was struck by some sort of projectile or missile, or explosive charges placed on the ship. Mines are unlikely as the damage is reported to be above the waterline. But Israel is in no doubt about the culprit, and have asserted that this was an attack by Iran. Speaking on Monday morning, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, accused Iran directly of being responsible. His comments came after the Israeli Air Force struck targets in Syria on Sunday night that are alleged to be linked to Iran and proxy militia groups that they support in the country. The Israeli military has declined to comment on the strikes, though a Syrian spokesperson said that their air defences had shot down most of the incoming missiles. This is a standard response and is generally proven incorrect with previous examples being Syrian surface-to-air missiles proceeding to hit the island of Cyprus and even, unfortunately, killing their own allies and civilians. All of these attacks occur as tensions ramp up between Iran and the Gulf Arab states. On Saturday, Houthi forces in Yemen fired a ballistic missile at the Saudi capital of Riyadh, as well as at least six explosive-equipped drones that were aimed at the Saudi towns of Abba and Kamis. Mushalt. The Saudi military reported that they had intercepted all of these missiles and destroyed them. The Houthis are a Yemeni Shia movement that are supported by Iran against Gulf Arab forces operating in that country and are considered an Iranian proxy as a result. They have demonstrated increasing sophistication over the years, including the use of anti-ship missiles alleged to have been supplied by the Iranians and have attacked multiple merchantmen and military vessels both in the Red Sea and in the Gulf. But these latest attacks do raise the prospect of greater cooperation between Israel and the Gulf Arab states, leading to the possibility of Israel not just striking at Iran's proxies in Syria and Lebanon, but possibly directly against Iran itself. The historic signing of the Abraham Accords between Israel and the UAE last year and subsequently with several other Arab states, has seen a sea change in the politics of the region. Not only have the Accords normalised relations between Israel and much of the Arab world, it has also potentially changed the military dynamic. Israel not only withdrew its objections to the UAE purchasing advanced F-35 strike aircraft from the United States, It is also currently participating in the huge IDEX arms fair hosted by the UAE. This is the first time ever that this has occurred and signifies the breakneck speed that both the Gulf Arabs and the Israelis are moving forward in their new relationship. And the perceived threat from Iran is what is driving it. So although the idea of Israeli jets operating from Arab bases would have seemed impossible a mere year ago, it is a great deal more likely now. Should both the Arabs and the Israelis decide that some response must be made in the face of Iranian and their proxies' attacks, it should be remembered that Israel has a long history of dealing with perceived threats and not giving a damn about international opinion on the matter. Thanks for watching, hope the video was interesting. If you want to know more, there is a link in the description to an article with all the relevant citations. And if you did like this video, please drop a like, maybe subscribe, and perhaps look at supporting the channel in other ways. Again, links in the description on how to do that. Have a good one, take it easy, 
and I'll see you all again soon.